the topic of today's podcast, how to sustain long-term motivation and set yourself up to win at anything you set your mind to. Quick disclaimer, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a licensed therapist, I'm probably the last person you would think to take advice from sometimes, but that's the case. Just know this is my feeling, and if you take any of this advice and put it to work, the results are 100% on you. Now let's kick this pig. Learn to make money online the right way. You're listening to the Create Profits Online Podcast with the dude that puts more glide in your stride, more pep in your step. And if you don't dig this mess, you got the wrong damn address. From the back of the shack, getting down to the nitty gritty in the big city, here's your host, Todd Snively. And he's looking damn pretty. Let's go. All right, the essence of what we're going to be talking about is motivation. I, I talk to people all the time. They, they want to be richer. They want to be in better shape. They want to build an amazing business. They don't talk to me too much about improving their relationships, but they definitely want to do that. And a lot of them just want to live in an incredible house. Now, the great news is that all of these goals are achievable. None of them are beyond your reach. And you know what? You probably already know how to achieve most of them. You probably already have the skills, the knowledge, and the expertise. And if you don't, you can easily get to that. And sure, I mean, you could read a book on each of these topics. You could read a book on how to get into great shape. You could read another one on how to build a business. Chances are you would just be procrastinating. Chances are you're just spinning your wheels rather than getting down to the actual hard work you know you're really supposed to be doing. So you don't have a problem with how. You don't even have a problem with what. The issue is with just actually doing the things you're meant to be doing. It's sticking to that diet plan. It's saving that money instead of spending it on little things. And it's approaching clients maybe to offer your hard work if you're in that type of a business. The problem for most of us is that we just lack the motivation that we need in order to start on a new project. Even if we start out well, we often end up flagging and giving up after not long. So how do you get around this problem? How do you maintain motivation and drive? How do you stay disciplined and focused? Now, this is the ultimate example of to teach a man to fish or a woman, because you're just not learning the steps you need to take to accomplish something. You're learning the very stuff that accomplishment is made of. With true grit, determination, and willpower, you can accomplish literally anything that you put your mind to. And in the next few episodes of this podcast, you will learn to fish. You will learn to dig deeper than ever before, whether it's to complete a workout to write the next great American novel, or to create your own business. And once you can commit yourself 100% to a given task, who knows what you can accomplish? What I've learned over the last 40 years is that motivation is key to everything. And it does sound grim, doesn't it? Grit and determination are not exactly normally spoken in the same breath as fun or relaxation. Actually, though, once you get your motivation, and your discipline sorted, you're going to find that you have more time to enjoy yourself or to relax with your family. That's because you'll be able to work more quickly and efficiently, and you'll be able to work towards the goals that actually interest you. I have a real issue with people who say that in order to be successful, you need to sacrifice time with family and friends. It bothers me when people say they can't be in a relationship because they need to focus on their career. The reason this bothers me is that I 100% believe and know you can have it both ways. You can work extremely hard on a project you're passionate about and be extremely successful doing so. At the same time, though, you can still find time to spend with friends and family. You can still find time to relax on the sofa and watch TV. You just have to work hard and work smart and then stop. In this podcast, you can learn how to do all of that. And with this kind of motivation and mental toughness will come all kinds of additional benefits. Benefits you can't even believe. 
Firstly, you'll find that you're more resilient to things that happen in your life. When you get bad news, you will be able to take it in your stride, adapt, and carry on. When you have more determination, you'll be able to improve all your skills through intense learning, analysis, and repetition. When you have motivation, you'll be cognitively faster because you'll be able to focus on the task in hand without distraction. And you'll be able to get out of bed on time in the morning. Clear the kitchen at the start of each day and bite your tongue in an argument because you are not a slave to your emotions, resulting in many hurt feelings and attorney fees being incurred. (laughs) I know this one for sure. This will be your superpower. It will change everything for you. And in this podcast, you're going to learn how to tap into it. One thing to understand, emotions rule motivation. Now, here's something that business owners and people selling stuff know about human psychology. Our decisions are driven by emotion and not logic. That is to say that you're going to buy something not because it's a great value or because you need it or even because you particularly like it. You buy something because you get excited by the cool packaging, because you think the materials they used look elegant, because you imagine how cool or elegant you'll look. You buy it because it's something other people have. You buy it because you had a hard day and you need a treat. And you buy it because you're worried That is going to be out of stock if you hesitate. Take a look at any marketing materials and you'll see that this is true. The fact of the matter is that we are ruled by our emotions, which you can think of as being a compass for the thing our body thinks we should be doing. The problem? Our body is hardwired to survive in the wild outdoors. As far as evolution is concerned, our main challenges are finding food, staying warm and dry, and procreating. We want to belong to a strong social group and we want to be respected by others. These core emotions can be roughly arranged according to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. But the point is that our thoughts stem from our emotions. Those emotions typically stem from our physiology and environment. This is what then determines. For proof of this, consider what happens when you get hangry. When you become hungry, this will make you grumpy, irritable, and stressed. And this can often lead to arguments, mistakes, and other problems. People around me, they know me very well. They know when I get hangry, it's time to back off. (laughs) So what's actually going on here? Well, first, the lack of food in your system causes your body to release large amounts of cortisol. Well, serotonin levels drop. That heightened cortisol leaves you jittery and anxious, and it's that hormone that causes your thoughts to become stressed and irritable. Why? Because in the wild, that hunger would be extremely dangerous, and it would be highly important that you seek out food, even if it meant competing with other people to get it. You'll now find yourself worrying about your boss firing you. You'll think about all the things your partner has done recently to irritate you, and the mess on the side in the kitchen is going to really annoy you. Your thoughts will now begin to race and you'll find yourself struggling to concentrate on anything. You're looking for danger, you're looking for problems, and you're tired. You think you're angry because your boss or partner or housemate's an idiot. But what you're actually angry about is because you're hungry. What does this have to do with motivation? Why does it matter? Well, the problem is that you now try to get work done. If you now try to focus, then you're going to find it extremely difficult to do so. The problem is that if you now try to get work done, if you now try to focus, then you're going to find it extremely difficult to do so. Consciously, you want to work on your project and get work done, but unconsciously, you're just looking for food. And there's countless other examples of this. What if you're tired? What if you're cold? Or what if you're stressed about something that you said to a friend last week? In these scenarios, the hormones and neurotransmitters running through your body are going to make it very difficult for you to focus on what you need to focus on. Motivation then is the ability to overcome that emotional drive to focus on what you need to do. Now, what happens when you're not hungry? When you aren't scared or stressed? When the temperature and your energy levels are just right? That's the point at which you begin to focus on the things that you need to do to be successful. That's the point where your motivation actually comes through. And remember those hierarchy of needs? Well, it's kinda, it kind of goes like this. Self-actualization, esteem, love and belonging, safety needs, 
and then physiological needs. So the list kind of shows us the order in which our needs must be met, where that last item, physiological needs, takes absolute priority over all else. After that, you'll look for shelter. You ever notice how you don't struggle with motivation to get up and go to work in the morning? That's because you know that if you don't go, then you won't be able to afford to eat because you'll be fired. That creates an emotional response, basically stress, which drives you up and out of bed and it works nearly every time unless you're so sick that you're just too, too unwell to go. And once you've finished work, you tend to spend time with your family. That's love and belonging. Or perhaps hanging out with friends, you know, going on a date. And you tend to look for esteem by buying nice clothes or by trying to advance your career. Self-actualization is everything else. This is the feeling of fulfillment that comes for having a goal or a passion. It's self-improvement. It is the desire to be the most that one can be. But you can't be the most that one can be if you're starving to death or if nobody loves you. That's why this hierarchy must be structured from bottom to top. You need to satisfy your most base desires and needs before you can start looking after the soul. The emotional drive to eat will always be stronger than the emotional drive to diet. The emotional drive to be warm and safe will always be stronger than the emotional drive to work out. And the emotional drive to hang out with friends will always be stronger than the emotional drive to go to work. But it also just so happens that the items at the top of the pyramid are also the ones that bring the most lasting contentment and happiness. And this is why so many of us struggle with our motivation. We struggle to tell our bodies that no, today comfort and hunger take a back seat to the things that we really need to get done to be happy. To improve your chances of going after those long-term goals, you need to hijack your body's own motivation system. You need to force it sometimes. Turn the hierarchy of needs on its head. Now, how do you do that? One option is to try and minimize those nagging doubts and physiological needs. In other words, make sure that you start your day full of high-quality food and you start your day with a clear slate. If you're eating low-quality processed cereal for breakfast, then your body's going to want more sustainable energy and nutrition. Therefore, you'll be anxious and you'll struggle to focus on other tasks, even if you aren't aware that hunger is the problem. So eat a meal of complex carbs, protein, and fruits, and your body will be satiated and sustained. The result is that you'll have one less thing on the back of your mind. Likewise, you should try to remove all nagging sources of stress. Tim Ferriss refers to these kinds of issues as open loops. These are jobs that you know need doing and that are causing a mild, low-level stress. That might mean answering an email to tell someone you can't make it to their party. Whatever the case, many of us will put off completing these kinds of tasks. In doing so, we actually prevent ourselves from focusing 100% on our current task. Solve this problem by following the one-minute rule. That means if a job takes less than one minute to complete, you should do it right away. Now, if you start your day with no distractions and minimal stress, you'll be able to focus on your goals much more easily. You'll find you're less likely to procrastinate and you're more likely to get the work done that you really need and want to get done. And equally important is to consider your environment. Where are you working? And what effect is this going to have on your mindset and your motivation? One big problem that often affects our environment is untidiness. This has the effect of making us feel slightly unsettled and uneasy. That's partly because there's too much visual information to process. Partly because untidiness is just tidying work that we know we're going to have to do later. And partly because we might unconsciously associate it with hygiene issues. And consider this, our peripheral vision is actually more acutely sensitive to movement because we use it in order to scan for danger and predators. You might be focused on your computer screen, a book, or the dumbbells you're using, but your unconscious mind is scanning the nearby environment for threats and things that need fixing. Fix that now, and you'll be much more focused on what you need to get done. Only once you convince your brain that everything immediately pressing has been taken care of, will it then allow you to focus on the meaningful work towards your goals. Now, there is another way that you can hijack your motivation system in order to get what you want. Have you ever noticed that you struggle to get out of bed early? 
This is a perfect example of motivation slash discipline that many of us have trouble with. We often hear about top CEOs and entrepreneurs waking up at 4 a.m. to get in a workout before working on their projects, but most of us just can't bring ourselves to do the same. The alarm goes off and we roll over and we hit snooze. Eventually, when we're about to be late for work, we manage to leap out of bed in a panic and then rush to get ready for the day. So using what you've learned so far, can you figure out what's going on here? The issue is with your hierarchy of needs. Sleep is a physiological need, and it's something that will help you to heal wounds, improve brain function, and other things. Your body knows you need it, and so it trumps your ambition to work out or write a novel or work on a business. Only once your livelihood is in threat do you actually manage to force yourself out of bed. The other thing to recognize is that you always will be more driven by needs that are immediate versus those that pay off in the long term. Sure, if you wake up at 4 a.m. and work out, you'll eventually be in incredible shape, probably. But if you stay in bed, you'll feel amazing now, for sure. So what wins as far as your primitive lizard brain is concerned, right? So what's the answer? One answer is to place something that you badly want within reach of your bed. Take something that will serve as a strong motivation to get up and then ensure that you only need to take the smallest possible step to get there. An example that I often use that I'm sure you can relate to is your phone. Many of us have a strong emotional drive to look at our phones. We want to see what our friends are saying. We want to see if we have an email from our boss. Now, these aren't great habits. (laughs) but they're deeply ingrained and we can use them to our advantage. All you have to do to look at your phone is to prop yourself up slightly. Thus, the drive to find out what is going on in the world, which equates to esteem, is able to briefly trump your physiological urge to stay in bed. Look at your phone for five minutes and the blue light from the screen will trigger the release of cortisol into your brain, helping you to feel more awake. You could likewise use some kind of snack that you love eating and place that by your bed, or you could treat yourself to an episode of your favorite TV show. A similar method is to create more real and immediate consequences for not doing something. People talk about setting up alarms <laughs> that will donate huge amounts of money to charities they don't agree with unless they wake up to stop them. <laughs> Easier is to tell your boss that you will log in at 7 a.m. every day. Painful? Oh, yeah. But once you're committed and your career is on the line, you'll find that you'll do it. I'm old school. Been in business 40 years, 60 years old, and my word is my bond. If I tell somebody I'm going to be there, if I tell somebody I'm going to do something, or if I tell them I'm going to have a phone call with them at 2 o'clock, I do it. I don't need any, any motivation. It's just how I'm wired. Procrastinating, it's just not an option because I fixed that in my brain a long time ago. When, when I make a promise to do something... I do it. But what you need to do, if you haven't already done that, is think about what already motivates you every day and then structure that to encourage yourself to work effectively. That's it for today. We're going to call this part one. We're going to get working on part two. I hope you enjoyed what you've listened to so far and that you'll come back for the second part to learn how to shape your motivation to be more successful. Thanks for listening. Take care. I will talk again soon.